If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt to solve the question on your own before listening on. For part A of the question, we're going to draw a free body diagram of the vehicle at point A. And there are two forces acting on the vehicle at that point. We have the gravitational force, which is pulling the vehicle downward. And then we have the surface of the track, which is pushing up on the vehicle, and that's known as the normal force. Now, according to Newton's second law for circular motion, we have the net centripetal force equaling mv squared over r. For the net centripetal force, we are going to combine the normal force with mg. Notice that mg is pointing downward, so we're going to assign a negative sign to it when we plug it into the sum of the forces. Now, since the question in part A is asking us for the force that the track exerts on the vehicle, we are essentially being asked to solve for the normal force, so we're going to add mg over to the right side of the equation. We'll notice that mass appears in both terms of the equation, so we can actually factor it out. And then at that point, we can plug in the known values for the mass, the speed of the vehicle, the radius of the circular track, which is marked on the diagram, and then the value of 9.8 for g. And when you simplify that on your calculator, you should get a value of 24,900 newtons for that normal force. If we are requested to put it into kilonewtons, then we just have to take our decimal point and move it over three places to the left. So we would get 24.9 kilonewtons as the final answer for part A of the question. For part B of the question, we're going to draw a free body diagram of the vehicle at point B. Now ordinarily, the free body diagram at point B would be the same. We'd have the downward gravitational force of mg and then the surface of the track pushing up on the vehicle. But in part B, we're being asked to find the maximum speed. So we can imagine the vehicle coming up the hill here, moving very fast. And it's going so fast that for just a moment, the wheels of the vehicle will leave the surface of the track. In other words, the track is no longer touching the vehicle. And in that case, there would no longer be a normal force. So we're going to eliminate the normal force from our free body diagram. And so at that moment, we have only one force acting on the vehicle. Newton's second law, of course, would still apply. In this case, the net centripetal force is simply the mg force. We'll then notice that mass appears on both sides of the equation, so we can divide both sides by m and cancel it out. We will then multiply both sides of the equation by the radius, and then we will take the square root of both sides of the equation. And then to calculate the speed, we simply have to plug in the radius at point B, which was given in the diagram, as well as 9.8 for G. And when we plug in those known values, we get an approximate speed of 12 meters per second at point B. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel so you could stay tuned for additional videos. Also, you are welcome to send in your own question to the email address on the screen, and I will do my best to post a solution to it on YouTube.